Hi, welcome to uh, part two of the Get Energized experiment. Um, before we get started, I'm just going to quickly walk through what materials you'll need. Um, if you are moving directly on from part one, you might still have the batteries. That your students made. Exactly. The electrolyte solution. If not, go back to part one. It's really easy to make 40 grams water, 5 grams salt. Rock salt. Rock salt. Yep. And then we also have a flashlight in this experiment. And then students will be using the red bag finally with the different washers. So there's going to be a Solar A washer and a Solar B washer. Solar A is coated in a cop it's a copper oxide. Copper oxide. Copper oxide. Um, it's important that if you're going to when you're cleaning these uh, that you don't actually scrub Solar A and rub that copper oxide off because that is used. It's important um, in this whole experiment. Exactly. And then quickly too, students will need to switch from the voltage section over to the current section. So they're going to be on 20 um, milliamps. Yeah, and that's super important because we're no longer measuring the voltage, we're measuring the current. Um, big difference. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, in this experiment, you're, we're going to be testing uh, the, uh, the, the ability to can take solar energy and produce, um, produce a current with it. Um, using that, you're going to be using the two washers, Solar A and Solar B, which are um, Solar A with that copper oxide is a semi-voltaic, se oh, photovoltaic semiconductor. <laughs> Long word. Yeah, big word. Uh, so photovoltaic semiconductor. And basically what happens is as you shine the light on it, uh, it takes that energy from the light and releases ions, which are picked up by solar B, uh, which then sends that current basically through, creating a circuit, which sends that current through the voltmeter and then back down and then through it again. Um, so it's using that light, again, it's using that light to create a current through these. Exactly. So we're going to quickly show you how um, the students will set up this experiment. So solar A washer needs to go on the positive or red wire, solar and B. Solar B on black. And so when students do put the washers in the electrolyte solution, they'll want to keep it tilted. This is a great point for you to have a discussion with them about solar panels and how they're often um, slanted. Slanted, and, they fall, and how they would, for instance, follow the sun exactly. um, to gain the most surface area and gain as much solar light. And so you can do that. You can have your students test that by using the light and having them actually f um, follow the path of the sun, basically, at different angles, using different angles of, um, of where the light is to test, see what angle is the best. You can also um, have your students test different distances, how far away the um, how far away the solar cell is from the light source um, and your students will hopefully notice a trend in that the farther that the, the farther the light source is away from the solar cell the smaller your number is going to be and that's and because of the inverse the square, square law. law exactly and students can also try different light sources too so they might want to try the flashlight indoor light uh, they could go outside they can t um, test shady areas sunny mm, areas, sunny areas different angles while you're at, you know, outside in the sun. Exactly. Certain things. And make sure your students are recording all their observations in their notebook um, because they will want to use whatever, um, the highest current, they'll want to use that to recharge their battery. Again, important to write down everything in their science notebooks, everything that they've observed, what light source works best, angle, distance, yada, yada, yada. Exactly. So if students did keep their batteries, um, if you stopped at part one and then the next day you're going on to part two you don't have to do this again but you can at least have a discussion with your students about this next step so students will need to take the connectors out of their multimeter they'll want to have the positive end on the positive bat side of the battery and then black on the negative side and then we can try with our flashlight just since we're indoors shining the light. Um, this is why you want students to record their observations because most often they're going to find that going outside often produces the um, most current. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also a good point to talk about because uh, what we are doing at this current moment is recharging the battery um, and the way this is done is um, anytime you recharge a battery a, uh, you send the current actually in the opposite direction that it would normally go and it's basically making those chemical reactions that are happening on a normal basis when you're normally using mm -hmm. the battery to go in the opposite reverse direction. Therefore, you know, recharging the battery, resetting up, you know, it's like resetting up, I don't know, whatever you want to 
something. Yeah. Uh, resetting it up, uh, resetting so that it can work again. Exactly. And this is also a great point um, to have a discussion with your students since we're using copper washers and one of our um, copper metals is actually coated in that copper oxide. And that's also an important discussion because a lot of students might just see solar panels. Um, and they might not understand that you can recharge batteries using this as well. Yeah, a lot of solar panels use something similar to this uh, or some other version, something kind of like this. Uh, and it's important and it's kind of good to talk to your students about how it works and how certain, I mean, it's just always good to your students know something kind of exactly. interesting like that. So this part, there is no um, data collection. You're not going to measure how much you recharge this. It's just for your students to understand that they are recharging the batteries they used in the first part. And then lastly, um, at the end of this booklet is an interview by a CSU student who's doing the same exact experiment that we did. And yeah. it's, just, it's, it's cool to have your students read that and have them realize that there's actually people who are doing um, this exact experiment in real life for you know, actual science and getting paid for it, exactly. um, researching certain things like this. And college students like us are doing these experiments yeah. too. So it's a great... Great experiment for your students. Yeah. And this is also a good opportunity to talk about renewable energy for your, with your students. Um, it's a good stepping stone to talk about solar, and then you can convert that into whatever you wish. Um, it's just an overall good experiment. Absolutely. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on our next video. Have a good one.